everybody. Um, thank you so much, CSCA, for inviting me. And thank you for all coming to my talk. I had no idea that so many people would want to hear about my experiences over the years. Um, this is my second time in Columbus. My, actually, my first time was this December when I was driving through to the New Jersey to my family. And uh, I was just, I really love this city and I want to come back to visit. I want to give a shout out to my friends that came to visit tonight and come to my talk. Thank you so much for coming. It means a lot, especially when over the years we, you know, been designing and, and you know, moving on in our lives. It's nice to kind of reconnect, even if it's just for a moment. So to begin, my name is Lila. I was born and raised in Central New Jersey, and I spent my first eight years of my design career working in New York City and New Jersey as a graphic. I currently live in Kansas City, Missouri, where I've been working as a type designer, which at Hallmark they call font designers at Hallmark Cards. Um, and I just celebrated my seventh year in December. <coughs> Sorry. I'm assuming most of you have sent or received a Hallmark card over the years, but in case you haven't, it's a family owned consumer goods company that has been around for over 100 years. They're best known for their greeting cards, but they also make gift wrap, holiday ornaments, stationery, small gifts, and home goods. They also have a very successful TV network in the U.S., so if you were just watching those holiday movies this uh, winter, it was probably a Hallmark movie. So just to give you the size of how big Hallmark is, 28,000 people work at Hallmark worldwide, and over 500 of those employees work in creative at, in Kansas City as designers, illustrators, writers, editors, packers, and lettering artists. So we're constantly surrounded all day with lots of really creative people. Including in this group of creatives are two typeface designers, which is myself, and the senior typeface designer, Josh Ruggs. He's actually been at Hallmark pretty much his whole career, so it's been 15 years for him. So. He's been an amazing mentor and an amazing co-worker, and I feel lucky every day that I get to make fonts alongside him. So at Hallmark, you're probably all wondering, like, I can't believe there's an in-house typeface design department. How long has this been going on? Well, believe it or not, it's been going on before, like, fonts were being used on computers. So it's not a new concept for us. So in 1964, the Alphabet Group, which was what it was called, was formed by the late lettering artist and designer extraordinaire Myron McVeigh. Back then, when he started the font group, the purpose was to create custom alphabets to be used on photo typesetting machines. We still make alphabets similar to how Myron and his team made them, but computers and font software has replaced those machines. Currently, our font library at Hallmark houses about 10,000 fonts. Around 2,600 are proprietary to Hallmark, and that number is growing every month. So I know a lot of people ask me all the time, does this mean that you don't license retail fonts? And the answer is, oh no, we <laughs> it's a bulk of our collection. <laughs> so I bet you're wondering, how the heck did I get a job like this or even get into type design in the first place? Well, I started out as a graphic designer who loved typography. Before I came to work for Hallmark, I was a typography-obsessed graphic designer who dreamed of becoming a, a package designer for a consumer goods company. Early on in my career, I got a taste for that when I got my first like really exciting job as a corporate communications designer at Martha Stewart Living on the Media, and that actually turned into an associate art director's position for corporate branding. So, before Martha Stewart, I, you know, I was the typical, you know, designer straight out of college. I was working at very straightforward, desktop, production-heavy design jobs. And um, what was cool about Martha was the first time that I knew that I would be coming in every day and working on a really fun and engaging project where I could really use my creativity to create really compelling and interesting visually beautiful solutions for the brand. So this was one of my all-time favorite projects that I worked, because I'm not going to show a ton of work from like my uh, early days, but I kind of wanted to give you an idea of like how I kind of went into type design. So I always had 
my approach for working has been always been very multidisciplinary. I love patterns, I love making things, I love to draw. So at Martha, I felt like I could use all those skills. So this was one of my favorite projects. So Martha had just rebranded her uh, her company, and it was this the Dying logo, which is beautiful, and it works so well on so much of her stuff. And we needed to create a uh, a just a beautiful gift presentation for the holiday party because every employee got a holiday gift. So what I did was I took the medallion logo and I made it into snowflakes. And with the collaboration of my art director and I, I did the wrapping paper, she did the beautiful tag, and we both picked out the ribbon. So I always love this kind of, uh, what's the word, uh, collaborating with other people to make something beautiful. Sadly, the recession happened, and I lost my job at Martha Stewart. So, but actually, I was able to get a long-term freelance gig at Princeton University in their communications office. I worked there as an intern for two years, and I loved the people there, and I learned so much about typography because so much of my job was like laying out brochures, laying out academic documents. I really learned how to make type readable, and they really pushed me to even though the work could sometimes be a little stale, they always pushed me to kind of use my design thinking to create, to make really compelling solutions. So um, most of the designers I worked alongside were experts in editorial design. Like they loved, they loved laying out newspapers and newsletters and stuff. So they gave me all the branding work because nobody wanted to do it except for me. So I took advantage of that because I've always loved doing branding. So. What led to it was, I, in terms of rebranding things, I would make, I'd have to do a lot of cool books. So um, it was definitely a job where I got to go on press, I learned how to pitch to clients, and I learned how to solve problems in limited time frames, and how to fit lots and lots of words on a single page without making it look overwhelming. So, I mean, looking back, I don't think I realized how much these two experiences working at two very completely different places would have on my career in eight to 10 years. Unfortunately, about 11 months into my contract, it was it was dropped all of a sudden because they too had budget cuts and I was out of a job. And this is where I got very stuck. I wasn't enjoying the design work I was getting as a freelancer and I wasn't getting any interviews for work that was number one, being paid decently or number two, I the work was just depressing, or just work where it would be a drag to come in every day. And I was thinking about quitting design and becoming a librarian. <laughs> so um, before I did that, I decided I was going to give myself some time to kind of think about this decision I was going to make. So I decided to, do, to get my some have something to do that kind of sparked some creativity in me. So I always wanted to take a calligraphy class at Martha Stewart. So because I had time, I decided to do it. So I took my first calligraphy class at Society of Scribes. And it was like a very intro class. It was broadcast calligraphy. And the reason I took it was not because I wanted to be a calligrapher. It was because I knew how important learning calligraphy was in order to become a better typographer. I wanted to learn the anatomy of letters and why they look the way they did. So I thought this was like the perfect thing to kind of keep me motivated and keeping my creative morale going. So I feel like if you're feeling really frustrated at your job or you're feeling like, oh my God, where am I going to take my career next? Take a class or do something you've always wanted to do but never had the time. Like that's what I did and it really helped me have some clarity on what I wanted to do next in my career. Even though I was kind of like, oh my gosh, how do I get to where I want to go? So the class ended up being so much fun, I decided to kind of keep going with it. I originally wanted to like take black letter and learn like how to do like lettering for like death metal bands and stuff, but uh, the only class available was pointed pen copper plate. But I took it anyway because I was like, ooh, I want to learn about why those letters look the way they do. And I took the class and for me, it's hard to explain, but I felt like the second I, the pen hit my hand, I felt like it was an extension of myself. And for the first time in pretty much my adult life post-college, I felt like I could get what was in my head onto paper exactly the way I wanted to. 
So what turned into just like these little classes to keep me positive turned into days experimenting and just writing and trying new things. I was also writing a lot during that time. Like it's not an existence now, but like I had a Twitter account where for about a year I wrote haiku every day about what I was doing, <laughs> what I was saying, what I was thinking. So I took, so I was writing a lot of poetry and reading a lot. I mean, I lived in Princeton University, so I had access to all these libraries, and I would sneak into places and look at books. So I was writing a lot as well. So the calligraphy and the writing kind of came hand in hand, and it kind of was a way for me to start exploring like how type can make something speak more strongly and give a new voice to what I was writing. So the more I kept drawing and getting comfortable, I decided to start, because my friends, on, I had a lot of friends online because I was in this small college town. I didn't have a lot of money, so I couldn't go to New York and see my friends all the time. A lot of my friends online would be like, what are you doing? Like, what have you been up to? And they'd want to see the calligraphy. So I made, like, just for my friends, I made a Tumblr page where I just started posting all these little experiments. And I didn't think anybody was looking at my work. I didn't think anybody cared. And it wasn't until I posted on Dribble that I realized that people actually were. And I don't know if you know who John Bordley and Tiffany Wardle are, but they are um, graduates of, um, well, I know Tiffany is a graduate of the Reading Type Design Program. And John Bordley, he has done so much like type academic research about history of really old, <laughs> old letter forms and type that was created when the printing press started. It, some of the stuff sometimes goes over my head, and he's brilliant. But it was funny how I was like posting like this random stuff, and they started both responding, going, you should consider, like, have you thought about making stuff into a font? And I never thought about that until they asked me that question. And then I started thinking, maybe I should. And I was so overwhelmed because I didn't know like what software I had to use, how to even use the software. Because this is like before the age of all these amazing uh, font editing softwares where it, the learning curve isn't as bad as it used to be. So for me, I decided to start looking around and I saw on Twitter of all places, I saw an, a, a link to apply to Type It Cooper. And I looked at it and I've been playing around going back to school and this seemed perfect because it was you can still work and take these classes. You didn't have to take a full year off and spend $30,000 to like go to grad school. So I applied, not thinking I'd get in. I got in <laughs> and it was one of the most challenging, amazing things I've done in my career so far. This experience, as hard as it was for me, because I didn't take to it perfectly when I started and I wasn't the best in the class, it changed my career for the better. The second, like, within a year, the jobs I was getting were so much better, and my work was improving. And that was another thing. Like, I was working on these slot things, and at night, just, like, as little breaks, I'd still let her. So I started to see my work kind of evolve. And in this program, you're making a typeface, and then you have to take all these supplemental classes on the weekends, or, like, twice a month. I'm trying to remember. Um, but you take like classes in lettering, and you would do like an expressive typography class where you'd have to make letters out of out of out of like sticks and stuff. So it was such a cool way for me to start really uh, seeing how I can make letters speak. And that was another thing I was learning so much, and all these little experiences were experiments I was doing were starting to really look like extensions of myself and how I was feeling inside. And I started to like collaborate too, like this photo of the bird, my dear friend from college, Sarah Boyer, she loves photography and that's her passion outside design. So she would give me photos and I would find a quote or she'd find a quote and I'd letter it. So it's like one of those really, it was one of those really fun dynamic things. And I kind of said to the other day, I said, we really need to start doing that again because it was such a fun thing for both of us. And at the time we both were like not super happy at our jobs and whatnot. And it was just a good, fun thing for us to do, even though we weren't in the same city. So, um, and also during this time, thanks to teachers, or really Summer Stone at Cooper Union, and just people online, my work caught the attention of the employees at Hallmark and American Greetings, to be honest. <laughs> 
specifically typeface designers and lettering artists. I first applied to American Greetings and I got turned down. And I decided because Hallmark kept, people at Hallmark kept contacting me that I would reach out. And we talked for about nine months, and they said after I finished Cooper to call them back. So we were kind of in conversation. I was keep doing my exploration. And I was still like job hunting too. Like I was freelancing full time, but I wanted a steady job so I didn't have to be like spending all my free time like looking for the next new job. So I was, as I was speaking back and forth with Hallmark's recruiting, finishing hype at Cooper, job hunting. I was lettering as much as I could, and then I got, in like mo a month before I finished Hyper Cooper, I got the most interesting, unexpected project. So Tina Roth Eisberg, best known for uh, Studio Mates, Creative Mornings, and her blog Swissness, was starting a line, a temporary tattoo company called Tapley, and she actually posted a job for a freelance package designer. And I applied just wanting, needing work, and she got back to me right away. And even before the interview, she was like, I love your lettering, let's work together in some capacity. So I didn't get the packaging job, but she did give, tell me, I would love to, you to turn some of my ideas into designs. And she wanted to do like these temporary tattoos that looked like jewelry. So I, we, she gave me some like sentiments that she was kind of thinking about, and I and I shared some with her too, and I just started making stuff that looked like jewelry, and these were like, the, the um, be happy was like the first big one I did, and I did another one called focus, which you'll see I think in the next few slides. Oh no, it's right there. <laughs> Sorry, um, but like she, they act so like, I spent maybe a day on this stuff. <laughs> I mean, it was really fast work, and I was having fun, so the work went really fast. And what I thought was just a lovely project and getting to network with an amazing woman turned into a <laughs> uh, turned into a royalties machine. I actually <laughs> they were the best sellers for several years, and it was the first time that I ever saw impacts like that with my lettering work. And that was really, it gave me a lot of hope. Because at that time, I was not sure where this was going. And I had friends, really family, going, why are you doing this work for her? And I said, it's not taking that much time. I said, it's an opportunity. And for me, like she didn't, I felt like she was a really ethical and cool person to work with. So it felt right working with her. And it ended up being great thing and I'm hoping one day we get to work together again because she is a real she's a real gem let me tell you she's she's a, such a nice lady so but I really never thought that like I would collaborate with somebody like that so that happened and then I finished type of Cooper and this was my very first like solidified font and I look at it now and I think to myself like oh my god I'm gonna fix it <laughs> But it was such an ambitious over undertaking because I was a calligrapher and doing all this lettering and I had to really, like, I decided when I was in this program, even though, like, I knew I eventually wanted to do display and script fonts, that I wanted to learn as much as I could from the program. So I just made all the mistakes I could. I, I tried things. I pushed myself. And this was, like, a, a testament or, like, an example of how I got uncomfortable and I and I just did something. And this actual font ended up getting me a job because Rick Kuzik saw it and was like, I want to meet with her. I think she has some good ideas up her sleeve. Well that's what I was told by the other coworkers who told me when they were recruiting me. Um, so after the program I got I interviewed at Hallmark and I got a job offer. So in a span of a few months I went from working in New York City to Moving my whole life to Kansas City to work at Hallmark. And I, I will say this to y'all, I knew nobody out there. The only people I knew were the people I met at my interview, who I expected working alongside. It was one of the most, for me, it was one of the most scariest things I've ever done. Because like you move and you know nobody. And it puts you in such a vulnerable place and you either decide to, you know, scared of everything or you kind of 
allow yourself to be open and, and, and just let people guide you. And that's what I've been doing for the past seven years. And I can honestly say it's been a wonderful gift. So that's my story. So I figured, because I know a lot of you probably have questions about, like, okay, you work as a type designer at Hallmark. What is it like working in-house as a typeface designer? So I'm going to show you quickly what a typical font project looks like. So I'm either doing one of three things in the average day of a font designer who works in-house. I'm making updates and adjustments to existing proprietary fonts, like stuff that was made in the 90s that really needs fixing, or they want me to add letters to it to make it look more dynamic or more like handwriting. I'll be making a font, or I'll be making a font based off the hand of a lettering artist or a calligrapher or even an illustrator. Or I'm designing something completely new because the designer wants a font or a series of fonts in a specific style. So using my coworker, the brilliant Colin Walsh's illustration work as an example. So now Colin's an illustrator. I mean, he, he letters, but he considers himself to be a full-blown illustrator. So this was a this was like some lettering that he did and that was like he was combining with illustrations for the part of the Navy product and whatnot. And a few departments were requesting his lettering so much that it just made sense to make a font. So that's one thing that a lot of reasons why as in-house people we, we turn a lot of lettering work into fonts is sometimes once a lettering style gets popular or an art does directors want to use that in like their collection, it, it's a lot to ask of a lettering artist to letter like 50 or 60 things. So we like to try and help them automate as much as possible so they can really focus on their craft to make a really unique lettering piece for the products they're making. And to kind of move forward and not have to letter the same thing over and over. So that's what Paul and the team wanted me to do. So what Colin did was he literally gave me an index card <laughs> of this alphabet. And you know, I scanned it in and I put it in a font editor. And you know, I got it going. And I realized, and what you do is when you start building this font up, you realize that you need to uh, start, you know, you want it to make look natural. So you add another second alphabet. I also have to build numbers. So usually what I do, depending on the style of the artist, I'll try to mimic the style of the artist. I'll sometimes take their references and figure out, okay, how would they make a nine? How would they make a, like another, how would they make a question mark? So I do all of the lens. And I do language support because we do cards in other languages. So you have to make sure that you have the right accents over letters or letters that don't exist in American English. So that's kind of what I spend my days doing is sometimes filling in things, sometimes drawing new letters. And this is the final result of that font. And this, this kind of spans anywhere between a few weeks to like about two to three months. I thought it born. So with this font, we decided to call it Dynamite, which Colin's really into. <laughs> um, you could definitely tell he grew up in the 80s. <laughs> and he's a cool dude and he's a kid at heart and he has the cutest son. So the name felt so appropriate for the work he was doing. So that kind of summarizes like what the day of life a font designer is. So my job it is a lot of fun and it's engaging and I enjoy it. There are moments that are going to work feels the same way as it felt when I got my very first job out of college. Now, and this will happen sometimes when I believe, or has happened to me, where you know, you're at a job you really love, but sometimes it just gets hard. And when, when you're doing what you love for a living, that can sometimes happen. And it can be very challenging sometimes when you're in a funk to kind of get out of that. So I always try to kind of think in my mind ways to kind of remember, like, this is a job, but you can this is not, it's okay to not have good days. <laughs> so one of the hardest things that I had to deal with coming in the house at Hallmark was that when you come in the Hallmark, you have to kind of demonstrate that you can do the work, and that you have a point of view, and that you have a style, 
that you have lettering that can stand out on its own and ideas that stand out on their own. But when I got there, a lot of it was like, okay, we don't really need your ideas right now. We're going to have you work on this. And it is very reminiscent to sometimes when you work at a company and you're happy to stick within a brand and stuff. So that was something that I kind of had to get into the mindset of like, I need to treat my coworkers. I need to start thinking of this type of design job as I would when I was working as a branding designer or a graphic designer. My coworkers are my clients and they have to be my focus always. And they're the ones I turn to to get feedback. I'm there to help them figure out what they need. I'm there to sell, help solve their problems because I'm making tools for the designers to use. So the typefaces that I make at Hallmark are for them. They're not for me. And once I kind of got that mindset, it made, I was able to kind of get into that great headspace where I could be the best I could be at my job. Um, that's one thing, like this is one thing I like to say all the time, is like I'm here to help, not to hinder. That's something I always try to remember when I'm working for people. Yeah, I can like put my ideas out there, and I still do, but sometimes I have to figure out, okay, when is the right time to do that? And that is like, that's one of the things that I feel like I've learned a lot about working at home. It's like the hardest thing to master is knowing when to pitch the right ideas at the right time. Timing is everything. <laughs> so, um, and surrendering your point of view for a brand is a scary and risky step. But like I know it is, especially when you're new to working in design. Um, it, but I have to say is the longer I've worked at my job, the better I've become at knowing when it's the appropriate or crucial moment to pitch ideas and give suggestions. So I strongly believe in the key to keeping tab in your own voice in a brand design environment is to always be doing something else outside your J job and keep being you out when you're not at work. When you do that, you never stop having ideas. <coughs> and you always kind of come in to be more, more optimistic. So, um, in order to keep my creative spirit up as a type designer, um, being part of a team of two and not having another team member on my job, at my job level, to bounce ideas off of, I realized that I had to kind of have like a toolbox on how to keep myself going. So tonight I'm going to share with you some of the things I do that help me stay creative when I'm doing the same thing every day when you think about it fonts. I'm not designing different products every day. I'm making fonts. I'm sitting in front of a font editor drawing letters all day long. <laughs> so the first thing I want to talk about is not taking without giving in return. And I know this is really hard because when I lived in New York, you have to be very careful about putting yourself, like, being super vulnerable. Like, you have to give people the benefit of the doubt, but you can't be a diplomat. So um, it's kind of figuring out how you can give to people and, and help them. Because usually when you do that, you get it full in return. And the goodness comes right back. And when people trust you like that, that's when all the good stuff starts happening. When you start to think about projects and scheming ideas and comps and things. Or even helping somebody with your past skills to help elevate their work. So one thing that... I did that's kind of like being a, being a giver and not a taker is when I was posting, like I, I'll see my fonts being used in the wild. And one thing that was really cool about, I discovered working at Hallmark was that so many of the fonts that were made and things I created, the whole process from drawing the letters to developing the font to marketing it, it was all done by women, and I know in the type world right now, there's a lot of people where we're trying to give more visibility to female type designers. So this was a way for me to not only like show that women are in this role and we're thriving, but I wanted to kind of share with my co with the world how awesome my coworkers are. And, um, and it's not a Hallmark tag, and I let, and, and if I see somebody else using it, I let them, because that's what it's about. It's about giving visibility to people. And for me, it's sometimes when I get in, discouraged or I'm frustrated, it's a, sometimes I'll look at the work I've done with people, and it reminds me how much of an impact we all have. 
just gives me fuel to keep going. And another resource that's helped me is just finding my tribe. Um, there is moments where at, when I was at Hallmark, because I was one of the only women font developers at the company, it's hard when you're like starting this new career and you don't really have that perspective from somebody or you're talking to another woman in design and they don't really understand your day to day. It can be kind of frustrating, like you just feel very isolated. And I can say online groups, and for me especially alphabets, was super helpful with that. I was able to connect, like when I was doubting stuff, I was able to have a female type designer with like 10 years experience be able to say to me like, no, what you're doing is normal, this is how you get through it. Just having kind of that guidance from somebody who's been there has really helped me. And I wanted to share like this lettering piece because the, the little group, this online, private online group, they have a blog and they, a lot of people post like papers and writings that they do about typography and culture and type. And we do a header, everybody does a new header every week. So this was the header I did. And it was kind of cool because it was kind of at a point where I started to realize that I was really growing at home right as a lettering artist and a type designer. And I just thought, like I looked at my work and wow, my, my letters look very adult in a way, but they still look like me. So I, I saw that growth while working on this project. The next thing is collaborating with folks who are not your age. And this was something that I, um, I struggled with when I was in um, organic designer was I just really wanted sometimes I felt like I was the one who was right and it really wasn't until I experienced having an older person criticize me saying that I didn't deserve my job that I started to see how that felt and that's when I decided to never treat anybody like that. And, that's, and that was something I decided to do was like, okay, I'm not going to let somebody's age intimidate me or make me think more or less of them. I'm gonna treat them as an equal or as somebody who I can learn from. And that's what I started doing. And I started focusing on working with younger people because when I came to Hallmark, I was 30. And I felt <laughs> compared to some of my peers. So instead of like feeling like, oh my God, just an old hag. <laughs> I'm going to uh, just, you know, focus on what I can bring to the table and what they can bring to the table. So one of these first artists that I've worked with on Johnson, so her name is Ali Smith. She's been at Hallmark for five years. Um, I remember when she was an intern, and um, it's amazing to think of. It's been amazing to watch her grow into this really awesome modern artist and designer. Started out as an intern and got hired right after her internship, and then she actually got moved down to design greeting cards. And I think it was awesome because it really helped her kind of grow her point of view and whatnot. And what's awesome about Ali is her work is so vibrant, and she has such a fresh take on colors. Sometimes if you use a lot of colors, it can look a certain way. I just love the way she uses color. It's like really fresh. It's something that even I, somebody who likes minimal color palettes, loves. And one of her first big design projects was like this wedding card line that was inspired by, oh my God, her most, the most beautiful wedding I've ever been to. <laughs> um, and she kind of cult, like curated it. And she does have the pictures on her blog. So if you look her up, you can check them out yourself. But it was cool to see her take her life and bring it into a product. She's also an amazing curator and photographer, so I get a lot of ideas from her on like nudes and style and stuff. And her mom actually worked as a photo stylist at Hallmark for many years. And she's also an amazing lefty lettering artist. Like a lot of back in the day, I know a lot of people were discouraged from um, writing with their left hand. And I just think it's so good that they're not doing because I think lefties have such a great energy and they write letters in differently and it, I just love the way they look. And it's just something that I could never do as a right-handed person. So the project we worked on was um, Bill Smith because at the time we needed a few monoweight um, scripts and they wanted something that was more upright because a lot of stuff we had was more italicized. 
And I was working on one based off of my hand that say I really wasn't feeling it. It didn't feel right for what the brand or this card line needed. So after seeing Allie's stuff, I asked her, would you be okay with me of turning your work into a font? She goes, yeah, let's work together. So I pitched it to my art director and he approved it. That's another thing I pitch all the time to my art director and he, and most of the time I have stuff got through. Sometimes it would take a few months, but a good amount of stuff got through and I was kind of proud about that. It's a whole lot of timing thing. So when, um, what was great about Allie is she works mostly in Illustrator. So when I started to kind of think about, okay, how, how are we gonna make these letters work as a font? especially a connection script font. Um, it was great that she kind of had everything drawn out to kind of save me time. I was able to kind of pop in her line work into the font editor, and it helped me because I had it saved me a lot of time trying to do a lot of technical production back end work to make it look like her hand again. And then I had her draw some um, to fill out some of the caps and put in some of the lowercase. And I didn't require her to do illustrator drawings for this because I knew, like I already had so much of her work in the font editor that I could just look at her work and be able to kind of get the vibe off of it. So this is how I, when I first started building it, this is how I, this was like the first, like I call this default mode where it's just like basic A to Z. And then I started doing this this technique and it is a technology that fonts have called flicker to flicker pictures. And so what it is, if you don't know, if you go into like Adobe products and you press, you go into open type, you can select different categories to change how the font looks. So I wanted this to look more natural. So I wrote some open type features just to kind of make those L's a little more natural and whatnot. So I got to do some really innovative things with the code. Because that's the thing, you, you write these lines of code to kind of get the font to swap out certain letters. So these were totally different glyphs that I was able to kind of, like if you look at the original, as you see the, uh, the exit of that capital A goes way up and save the, the lowercase L. So what I did was I redrew, I added another glyph and I programmed it where if those letters were together, they would connect in that way. So this was the final result of that font. And it was, we decided, I decided to name it Field Smith because she had just gotten married and um, it's a combination of both her and her husband's last names. So I thought it'd be cool to kind of show that that coming together, especially in a marriage. And what's cool about this was Allie was, I think, still working downstairs in greeting cards when I built this font with her. So she had just gotten back upstairs to lettering just as I finished. So people were freaking out. They're like, we won't be able to have our letter. But then they realized that we had a font of one of her writing styles. And people were a little bit relieved. They're like, oh, OK. So if we can't get her, we at least have the font. And actually, this card that you'll see on your right, that was actually made by another designer. Like, she did kind of the illustrations and the layout and stuff, but the typography is that that life of love is the lettering from her font from a field set. Now, while we're speaking about Nan, she was an amazing, amazing, amazing uh, designer that was also an intern with us at Homework. And She's no longer at Hallmark, she works in Seattle now. She moved to Seattle. But she's kind of like, I always called her the Renaissance woman because everything she did like was just so cool. She was a great photographer. She really took to lettering. She has such a good eye for things. She's a world traveler. She's a great curator. So she was always a fun person to collaborate with and to see her work flourish. And I just love her point of view when she, how she approached lettering. And these are some of my favorite cards she had done when she was at Hallmark. And I actually have the loved one hung up in my house because it's just so beautiful. Nobody sent it to me, so I bought one for myself. <laughs> and, I, and I hung it up. And she was like, I remember I told her, and she went, oh my god, you bought that? I was like, yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> I, wanted my, I wanted my house. So, and she, we wanted to work with each other on a project for years. And it really wasn't 
until this random weekend when we're both in the office off hours. And this is another thing, I, another way I keep inspired is I am curious. I was going to say be nosy, but this is a lot nicer to say <laughs> and less creepy. So I was um, actually hanging up because I'm part of an AIJ board and I do Kansas City Design Week stuff at the time I was. And so I was hanging up KC Design Week posters. And I noticed that Nan was in um, in the office working on a poster for, they call them at our work ERGs, so they're employment um, resource groups. So the point of them is to like you to it, to help bring diverse voices into Hallmark product more. So all these advocates. So she was part of um, the Asian. Uh, Asian and Southeast Asian resource group at Hallmark. So she was making a poster for Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. And I saw her and we were just catching up and she's like, I'm working on this poster. I, I can't figure out a good font in the orange. I don't want it to be too distracting or hard to read. And I saw this like beautiful print and I went, why don't you like add that in? And I walked away, like we said our goodbyes and the next, the next few days, I saw these posters up with this really cool lettering, and, and, and it looked so well with the typography she used. And I went to my art director, I said, I think this would make a really great font. He went, I think so too. Let's, let's, does Nan have time to write some stuff out? And I said, let me check, and Nan did. So I had Nan write a full list of letters, and I told her at the time, because as you saw, a lot of the stuff was like caps, caps, there was no lowercase. And I told her, because I knew from experience that designers want a font that has both lower and uppercase, even if the uppercase is awesome. So I said, if you feel comfortable, here's, here's, try to do lowercase as well. And I was just expecting her to do just the caps and small caps. And she came back with like three pages, like this beautiful lettering. And so after that, we I had a we had a trio meeting, and we both we all decided that we wanted. And Nan was even saying, "I want the work to look a little more perfect because that's kind of what I'm always striving for anyway." <laughs> so I decided to, I took what I did was I took her sketch, which is on for you guys the way left, and then I did like the little outline, like the skeleton, and then I used like an extension on my font editor called Noodler. And it kind of makes the stroke for you. So we just got the skeleton good. And then it kind of went from there. And it saved me so much time doing this. So this was the final result of that font. And I've been seeing it everywhere, which is, it's kind of always weird. Like before when I started seeing my fonts out in the wild, I, I was just excited to actually see my work out there. And these days it's so funny. I will look at my work on a card, or I'll see it, I'm like, oh, they're using Cintular again. <laughs> and uh, it, it's a, such a wonderful compliment. And even I, like when I'm just designing a promo sheet for something, I'll sometimes use it too. It's for the way it is, and for the hand lettered look it has, it does work pretty well in small sizes for some things. So this is, one of the harder things I do, <laughs> more challenging things I do to stay creative, but this is one of the ways I stay fresh with my type design work. So I was assigned to collaborate on a font with a master point of pen calligrapher, lettering artist extraordinaire, Jim Fiedler. His work is so beautiful, guys. It's I've learned, and I've learned so much from him over the years. And I mean, he's just like he does beautiful traditional to pen looking work and he ha he's been working for years and the thing that's beautiful about his work is like he's always evolving himself too and he has been doing work before like he was doing stuff on paper and not even touching the computer like they would send it to a printer to have it copied be produced so he has a lot of he shows a lot of throwback stuff on his instagram so you should definitely follow him if you want to see a lot of really amazing clear face and um, we were asked to work on a font together. He had this lettering that he did, and my art director wanted me to, to, to automate it to a point. And though I knew with Jim 
I would never want to automate his work because so much of his work is lettering, but I understood what my art director wanted. He wanted something that was like a little more, it's like a more simplified version of his work or to have like a script font that's kind of has an S's and gems. So I couldn't spend a year and a half working on fonts. So it was one of those things where I usually ask people if they're doing a script font to write out words just so I could see the relationships between letters. But he was just writing out like letters, just how a lettering artist would do, because you do one after the other and you see how they all work together. It's a little different than making a font. And the art direction with it was to make it look like a princess. And it was a lot of us going back and forth, back and forth. There are things I wanted to do with the font, and he went, no, 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 no. So it was a lot of us negotiating. But I learned so much from him, and I think he learned a lot from me as well. And this is the final um, uh, results of that font, and it's actually named after his granddaughter, Lily. And he actually wrote a letter to her using the font, and it was the cutest thing ever. <laughs> but I'm actually seeing it on holiday cards, and, and it's kind of exciting to see. And what was cool about this, so, you know, I made this font from Jim Fedor, and my art director wanted me to, to do a more casual, bold script type base. And he said, why don't you use the font you worked on with Jim Fedor as like kind of your, like as your starting point. And this is when I first got an iPad. So I was in Procreate and I just started drawing out letters. So I was using like Jim's skeleton and how his skeleton look when he draws pointed pen letters. So I kind of used that as a reference. And this was the final result on what I did. What's cool is because even though I kind of took a lot of inspiration from his initial skeletons, I put my spin on the font. So it ended up becoming something that I made, which was really cool. And Jim was very proud of me too. I think to get a compliment from Jim Fedor is always like the best thing because he doesn't hand them out unless he thinks they're really, your work is really good. So it was the ultimate compliment for me. And I've seen a lot of his stuff on holiday. I mean, I haven't looked so much at the Christmas stuff we put out this year, but I have seen it, and it's exciting to see. And even my friend Allie, my coworker Allie used it, and she had no idea I drew it, which was kind of fun, because it, it's fun to surprise your, your coworkers, because they have a kind of a perception of what kind of work that you would do outside, and it's fun to kind of challenge that. And another person I have um, really pushed the boundaries with, or has pushed my boundaries, is our creative director, Jean. And she's an amazing uh, illustrator, and she comes from an advertising background. And this is the first font we ever did together, and she literally gave me like, like a post-it note size thing where she drew the pixel brush in Photoshop and went, this is the look I want, and I want it to look like you did it in pencil. And it ended up being like a really, at the time, at Walmart, there wasn't really anything that looked like this. So that, that was, for me, that was kind of a cool thing. And I was in some, um, I was in like a process research um, group to think of new themes and ideas for cards and products. And me and art director Jessica Brace saw this series of cards she did for Studio Inc. And Jessica went to me, I really think we should make this stuff into a font. Like, this stuff is so fun. So that's what we did. <laughs> so I made a collection of three fonts based on her hand. And what was interesting about Jeannie was she didn't have much to give me. So I had to kind of see what I had. Like, I took an inventory on the letters that she made. And then I asked her to kind of draw stuff. And um, I started putting things in. And at first, she thought that, because um, she's not a type designer. But she's a designer, but she's more of an illustrative designer. She was, she was like, this doesn't look like my work. I make it look more like my work. She's I love it, but make it look more like my work. And I realized that I need to space the letters out because if you see some of her sentiments that she wrote, space them to really use. So once I did that, she went, oh yeah, this is fantastic, great. It's like we both learned something. And I kind of learned too that sometimes when you're working with other artists that you sometimes have to kind of approach things from their point of view. And when you do, you can kind of get 
new ideas for what you're working. So these were the final three fonts, and we named them all after Cuts of Jean, which was pretty fun. So, and I've been, this one I've been using even on my own, just doing little promo things around work, and it's just a fun one to use. I would love to expand on it one of these days. Um, another thing is, and this is kind of part of the whole trust thing, is really being fluid if you're working with people like work off your stuff. I know that's the one thing I love working at Hallmark is people are so awesome at like sharing their knowledge and playing with each other's work. Like there is kind of a nobody's ever accusing anybody of copying everybody. But it's funny. You you don't have that culture here. We're not a culture of lifters either. We actually like do work that Know, is original and we try to always put our own spin on things. So this one person who I've for years, ever actually ever since I started, who's been that sharer and that person who I've been fluid with work with is Bar Music. She's a senior artist. She actually just retired because she wants to create more art on her own. She's been doing all these beautiful encaustic like hot wax paintings and they're absolutely beautiful. So you should check her out on Instagram. But she is somebody who, for the last seven years, has put so much trust and confidence in me and my work. And she's just like the best. And, she, and my old boss, who hired me at Hallmark, his name is Rick Cusick, he, he told me, like, we were having lunch and I was showing her, like, the font that I did with Barb because he's retired now. And I sometimes show him my work from time to time to it. Barb is, like, one of the most amazing people I've ever worked with when I was at Hallmark. Like, she is the best. <laughs> And her work, like, the way her work looks is who she is as a person. She's warm, she's lovely, she's bright, she's hopeful, she's optimistic. She's just, I know I keep saying she's the best, but she really is the best. <laughs> and she's, what's cool is I love watching her paint. She's an amazing watercolor, watercolorist, and she can kind of take any medium and do beautiful things with it. And, like, like she just, she has such range, it just blows my mind. Like this is the pop-up card that she did. Now she designed it and she worked with a paper engineer. But like the lettering, the colors, the way the stuff laid out, like she did it all and it just blows my mind. Because I think to myself, I could never do that. <laughs> so our first font we worked together was this holiday inspired kids font called Fuller Power. And it was really fun because she had it all vectorized, but I just there were things she wanted to do with it. Like she wanted the double L Living Church. We wanted to kind of have things where we wanted to change the O, so the counter is a snowflake. Like, it was like we got to do all these little fun things with it, and that was like our first big project together. And then we were celebrating our coworker Allie's wedding shower, and she did this really cute, like, little, like, invitation, and I just, instead, like, the script was beautiful, mind you. And we already had something like that in our library, but I was really into that cat. And I was like, we need to turn that into something. I, I can't, there's something about it that I really like. And at the time, my boss, who's now retired, Rick Kuzik, was saying to me, okay, if you're going to do a font like this, it has to have more purpose. So we thought, okay, let's make a, a sans serif. Because everybody I know in, in readings and card design, they are always asking for narrow serifs. So I knew that I could draw the stuff, but I really wanted to see what Barb could do. And, and I asked Barb, do you want to draw a typeface? So I kind of showed her the ropes on like type design fundamentals. I mean, she already knew so much because she's a amazing lettering artist, but I had her draw things out to me. So it was like, instead of me dictating how things look, I started telling, well, why don't you do this? So it was like we kind of swapped roles. And it just, everything just turned out so, it looks, it looks so cool. And one thing is, I wanted to kind of originally make a, a color layered font, and at the time, layered font technology was not where it is now. So I decided to see how can I get the look on the left to look one color. So this was kind of one of the, one of the options I did for this font. This is like a four style family. So this is how it ended up turning out. And what's funny is the two, the ones that I thought were going to be used the most, the two bottom ones, they're used. The people are, they are constantly using the top two. 
And one thing that's really funny is people are using the, the, the fine line one and they're stroking it. So already I'm starting to realize that I'm going to have to make a more extended uh, family or extended family members for this set of bonds. And um, another person who I feel like I've been really um, mesh, I work very clearly with the senior art lettering artist Libby Long. She is like super accomplished, super amazing. Amazing lettering artist. She actually came to Hallmark wanting to be an illustrator, but she took the lettering, so they kind of made her become a lettering artist. But now she has a little bit of everything. And she's really into working out. She's actually gotten me back to the gym because I was really sick for a while, and she kind of got me healthy again. And I look up to her, and she's 10 years younger than me. So, and she's, Livy is super big on giving back to those in need. When she was at Ringling, she did this amazing portrait um, um, charity, she's made this portrait charity thing where she would make, they should get artists to paint photo, uh, pictures of children in third world countries so they actually had a photo or painting of themselves because some of them never even seen photos of themselves. So she's always been really passionate about giving back. So this was a project that she worked on last year to do a mural for a local elementary school. And it's just really sweet. And the women who are in the other picture, they're all lettering artists and designers. So it's one of those things where Hallmark's cool because you get to, you get to um, give back and volunteering is encouraged. So this was a font that, or this was some work that I kept seeing the do. And I really loved it. I didn't see anything like it in our library. So I decided, we decided, well, me and my art director decided that we were going to turn it into a font. So what was interesting with Livy was that we kind of decided to kind of merge, like we worked very collaboratively. She would tell me what she wanted to do. I would tell her, like, no, we're not doing that. It was definitely one of those compromises. And because we worked together in the past on fonts, it kind of became this thing where we just knew how to bounce ideas off each other. So, for example, one of those things where she has these tucking um, letters. So I made an open type feature where if the letters came were, were tight, they would come in together. But it wasn't a ligature, it'd be separate letters. So people could play with however they wanted to make the font. So this is the final aspect of the font font of that. This is one where I'm using a lot of open type features to get like the sides and the underlined O. And this font was used within two weeks of us releasing it. And this year I saw on like all these other things. So it was fun to kind of see a font that had a kind of a simple beginning turn to something really big. So drawing, everybody knows, this is how I stay creative. And I've been keeping sketchbooks even when I was working as a designer. And a lot of them have turned to lettering, I still draw. So I do encourage people to keep drawing, like seriously. And if you don't feel comfortable in a sketchbook, I'll show you something that I do. And this is what I learned from Libby and a few of the older uh, Hallmark lettering artists is that you um, you can paste like if you like to sketch on typing paper, just cut that stuff out and paste it on a cheap sketchbook. And then boom, you have a sketchbook of your stuff. So I do this a lot because I'll sometimes have little areas at my desk where I'll just do plain and just put them all together. It's like a lot of ideas. So now I have come to a bag where I have feeling like stuff. There's something for me to uh, grab from. And a lot of times, kind of, and also I do things where I love sketch notes and I wish I had more time to do them. So whenever I have a moment, I like to do them. They're great with challenges. But one thing I love doing is lettering exercises. So what I'll do is I'll see how many different ways I can draw a letter. I think I've gotten up to letter M. I kind of had to put that project on the back burner because I just got passing about other things, but it kind of leads to other ideas. And sometimes I'll do lettering projects just for the hell of it at work, and fonts will come from it. So in these stuff I did for grad lettering, I saw these, like, um, I was trying to find the perfect, like, sans serif text, and I couldn't find it, so I decided to draw it, and then I turned it into a font that I call Shiro. So, uh, 
So now it's like it's funny how I can take like a lettering idea or something where I was like, I'm one, I need to solve a problem for myself, and I turn it into something that can grow. And uh, oh man, I'm sorry, it's been an hour. If I'm too long, I can stop. But <laughs> um, another thing I do is like learning new writing styles. This is um, the work of retired lettering artist, black letter expert, Pete Note. And actually, me and Libby took a class at a community college, or no, at a, at a state school, where it's like a $10 calligraphy class for like eight weeks. So we learned how to do black letter, and that was something I never got to do. So being able to be in this class in a relaxed environment where Libby and I were like the only lettering artists in the class, everybody else was like retired people or people who just wanted to learn who were not artists at all. And it was great kind of being in this environment where we could play without, you know, really overthinking it. And it actually gave me some new ideas for letters. Like this was something that I drew after kind of taking some Take some of the fundamentals I learned from Factor and letters, and it actually inspired like this shower invite. I did a shower invite for one of my friends at work. And another thing is, um, I don't I take classes that don't connect with what I do. One of the cool things about Hallmark is we do all these wonderful workshops, and this is kind of how I've grown as a designer. It's like learning different things. Like I was terrible at brush lettering. And it wasn't until I took a watercolor class that I actually learned how to use a brush. Um, I like to kind of apply my lettering ideas. Like this was a um, this was a printing workshop we did where we took we made paper plates and we printed them. It was with Felicia Polak, who used to work at Hammer Press in Kansas City. One that really got me going and turned into a typeface was my dear friend. Marisol Ortega. She, I met her through Riley Cran at Girls Type. They were friends, and I was friends with Riley too. And she's an amazing illustrator and an awesome designer. And she did beautiful work. And we did this workshop. She had this block print workshop. And I just was very inspired by the day. And I did this exploration, um, lettering thing for people. And I ended up like, Come up with these sentiments, and I ended up like bringing in these ideas and making it hot. So I think I'm going to end because it's an hour, and I don't want to keep people. But I guess what I want to say is that if you have a um, if you have you know if you're getting stuck, you need to kind of have a toolbox of things to kind of get you out of stuff. So whenever you're having like a happy moment at work, just remember what you did and how you feel. And kind of keep it with you just in case you need it. Um, thank you very much. <laughs>